Choosing what's for lunch has become a more difficult decision for school teacher Sausan Qadri. Oranges she can afford this time, but not zucchinis. She only received $500 of her salary, the minimum paid to public employees in the West Bank, last month. We cut down on meat and the expensive vegetables and fruit. We stopped any extra expenses as we need to adapt. We might be able to survive this month and the next one because we have some savings, but we won't be able to take it much longer. This is what worries many people here. Not only has the international aid been reduced in the past few years, the United States has cut hundreds of millions of dollars paid each year to the Palestinians. Those cuts cost Zakaria Ahmed his salary and his job. 50% of my previous salary went to pay my mortgage, while 30% was covering my kids' school tuition. Now that I've lost my income, I am looking for jobs abroad to guarantee that my family lives a decent life. Palestinian leaders are looking for more support from Arab nations. Israeli measures obviously are not going to be permanent, it will be temporary, and we are... Uh, and the U.S. money? U.S. money, obviously, it is part of the political blackmail that the United States is trying to push us to accept what they call the ultimate deal. That's not something that's going to happen at all. The president has been very explicit in his position to reject all of this, and we don't trade politics for food. While the Palestinian Authority tries to manage the financial crisis by cutting costs and taking loans from banks, many fear that this is not a long-term solution, and it's already affecting all Palestinian walks of life. Even cutting hair has become a luxury for some people. Marwan Shweki tells us a $5 haircut is not a priority. The whole economy depends on employee salaries. Even the expensive cars you see are paid by loans and the cash flow is limited. For now, these people lining up to get their reduced salaries have no choice but to manage with what they have. Nida Ibrahim, Al Jazeera, The Occupied West Bank.